We're on our way to Bay City, Michigan to see some easily overlooked lake boat history. This is the beautiful Veterans Park on the west bank of the Saginaw River. Here is a quiet water-filled inlet where ducks float passively. But it wasn't always this quiet. In the 1890s, this same inlet was one of the busiest dry docks on the Great Lakes. It was a key element in Captain James Davidson's massive shipyard. In mid-May of 1894, he was ready to launch one of the largest wooden bulk freighters in the world, the Shenandoah. She was 320 feet in overall length, 43 feet in beam, and 22 and one-half feet in depth. She was built along the same lines as her older sister, the Thomas Cranage, and was just five feet shorter. Now, let's take a moment to correct some bad history. Many modern sources state that the Shenandoah was launched on Wednesday, May 16, 1894. In fact, the Port Huron Daily Times posted the story stating that the launch had taken place as planned on that date. However, on that day, a steady and heavy rain was falling over Bay City. Not wanting to have his VIP guests, as well as the common spectators, getting drenched, Captain Davidson postponed the launch until Thursday, the 17th of May. The Shenandoah sailed proudly and profitably for the next 25 years, hauling grain, coal, iron ore, and often towing one of Davidson's huge wooden schooner barges. Then came the onset of the Great Depression, and in 1930 the boat was laid up at the Davidson shipyard where she was born. She would never leave. Eventually the big abandoned wooden lake boat was torched by a serial arsonist, and she burned to the waterline. Here we see a U.S. Geological Survey image of the yard from May 20th, 1954. Zooming in, we can see the old Davidson shipyard and the sad fleet of abandoned wooden lake boats, most of which have been torched by the arsonist. Here is the dry dock that you saw in the opening video, and here is the Shenandoah. Only her outline is seen above the murky river water. You may be wondering about the vessel right here that is yet to be burned. She is the giant wooden schooner barge Montezuma. I'll be doing a video about her soon. Here we have another yet to be burned Davidson Lake boat. She is the Sacramento. Here on my YouTube page I did her entire story in a video titled Shipwreck in the Park. Look for it when you're done with this video. Now getting back to the Shenandoah. Let's time warp ahead to October 20th, 1965, courtesy of the U.S. Geological Survey again. Now all of the vessels have been burned to the waterline. Here is the Shenandoah. In modern times, when the water in the river is low, you'd see the wreck like this. Walking down to the park, you can see the Shenandoah above the surface. Here is her stern. and her impressive length is seen here. We can also see her 13 and 1 half inch wide iron straps uncovered by the burning away of the hull. Now they're jutting from the water. This series of straps and steel lattice webbing were used to strengthen the hull. It's one thing that allowed Davidson to build wooden vessels longer than 300 feet. Here's a closer look at one of the straps. Seen here is the curve of her once graceful bow. Looking the other way, we can see her stern. And then we see these. Huge drums. And ducks. What are these huge rusting cylinders? Any guesses? If you said her boilers, you were absolutely correct. 
Normally the boilers were mounted here on a mid-deck. The black and white person represents an average size man, and here is where he would shovel the coal into the boilers. When the boat was laid up, her boilers and engine were located in this fashion. When the boat burned, that mid-deck also burned away, and the boilers dropped down to the keel, leaving them in the position we see now. This photo shows the wreck in April of 1945, and as highlighted, the boilers have fallen, but her engine is still standing. Today, there is no sign of her engine, even at low water. A small mystery was also uncovered by this low water. This thing, leaning up against her hull, at first it looked like a fallen mast. Weeks later, however, the water got much lower, and we saw this. It's her rudder. Proof of that is the fact that it has a counterbalance to add ease in steering the vessel. Davidson rudders were huge. So it is that in modern times, the big steel lake boats sail right past the old Davidson yard and its white oak graveyard. The Shenandoah is easy to overlook. Currently, the water in the Saginaw River is quite high, but it'll cycle down. For now, the geese take their young and swim right over the Shenandoah's wreck. But, when the water comes back down, like it always has, you'll be able to look at the wreck, squint, and imagine the huge white oak hulled Shenandoah right there in front of you.